Growing up in Green Bay, obviously, you love the Packers. Yes. But what was the first major thing that you bought that you realized that this is not just going to be mm. an interest, but this is going to be a pursuit? Yeah. Good question. Um, you know, my first items that I really started getting into were jerseys. Mm. I, I wanted a collection of jerseys of all the players that meant a lot to me from the 60s. And really, I used my collection as a way to transport myself back to my growing up years in Green Bay. Right. And, you know, it, it quickly became not a collection, it became a passion. I wanted to delve into not only just collecting stuff, I wanted to know the history behind this. I wanted to know who these people were in the 60s and what their backstories were. And uh, uh, so I started collecting a lot of things from my years. Well, then the Packers decided to go to the Super Bowl, 31, and then all the trinkets from that starts flowing into my collection from family members and myself and whatever. I went to the game and bought a lot of stuff. So the, you know, the collection started kind of going crazy then. Right. But yeah, you know, the, the first really big thing that I, um, I bought a sideline bench from Milwaukee Stadium um, uh, from the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, and that was, that was a big item for me to so normal people to buy like that. a little bobblehead. Yeah, no, this is a 12 bench. foot bench. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the bad thing is in Texas and the stuff is all in Wisconsin. So, you know, <laughs> Lucky you have I, a truck. I, well, no, I, <laughs> I had to pay to have it crated up and, <laughs> and, and transported. But uh, yeah, some items like that really, uh, but it, you know, I, I really feel like it, it went from a memorabilia collection to just a, a real passion. Well, it's interesting, right? I mean, I got my dad's tickets from going to see the Dallas Eagles play baseball here in Eau Claire. Yeah. But it never occurred to me that I should go out and start collecting all of the Eagles pictures and then jerseys and bats and balls. Right. I'm always fascinated. It, to me, it always compared to, I love listening to music. What separates me from somebody who loves listening to music and then decides to make music? Yeah. There's a certain dividing line between the passionate fan and the, the pursuit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sort of curious. And Chris, you can talk to this as well as somebody who loves the Packers as much as Glenn does yeah. and grew up in Green Bay. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm fascinated by what it is about these items, mm -hmm. these players, and this history that drew you to assembling much of what we're surrounded by, some of what you'll be auctioning and what you still have at the house. Yeah. Well, again, you know, I think you touched on it. Uh, I was born in Green Bay. My Grandparents uh, had a store just blocks from Lambeau Field. Uh, when I was a kid, I never, you couldn't get tickets to Packer games in the 60s. They were kind of popular. And uh, so I'd sit on the step of my grandpa's store and I'd listen uh, and I could hear the crowd roaring. And I'd know really if the, if the uh, Packers were doing great or, or not so-so, you know, just by how much the roar of the, right. of the fans was so when you then decide yeah i need to get programs i need to get right. jerseys i need to get pictures i need to get balls well, i need to get glass cases to put all this stuff behind yeah. is there a certain point at which you're like i didn't realize how much i loved this team you know it was um even past that it was how much i missed green bay really you know uh we moved here um uh, after living in Wisconsin, my wife and two children moved here and here to Texas for a job. And um, so, you know, I was really just missing Wisconsin. I, I really was. So I, I used that collection at first to to bring Green Bay to my oh, really? my rec room. That's that's what I did. So it, and as I started collecting things, it was like, oh man, I remember. My dad used to tell me stories. He'd run into Paul Horning in, the, in one of the bars, and Paul would buy him a six-pack of beer. And, <laughs> you know, just cool stories. And, uh, you know, all those things started meaning a lot to me. Yeah. And that's when I was like, wow, I wish I would have listened a little bit more to the stories that my parents had and 
See, that's fascinating to me, right? Because a lot of collectors get into collecting because they're yeah. nostalgic right. for a thing from yeah. their childhood, oh, yeah. whether it's superheroes, oh, I loved comic books, or I loved the Beatles, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you collect some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you really, in a lot of ways, surrounded yourself and built yourself sort of a second Green Bay home in the heart of Texas. It really was. And that's fascinating yeah, to me. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, at one point, I, I thought about buying a... I actually thought about buying my grandparents' store. It was for sale, and I was going to take my collection there and have like a little museum there. But then I found out that the Packers had a Hall of Fame, and I decided I don't want to compete with them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you could, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, uh, it, it, that's, I, I really use that. And, you know, we have about 100 relatives down here that moved from Wisconsin. Wow. So it made... It made it real homey for all of our family yeah, yeah. too, and and uh, friends just love coming over and seeing it, and visitors from out of town and whatnot. So it's like being in Green Bay. It, it I mean, really that's is. really something extraordinary. Funny thing, uh, on game days, I put the uh, that I'm not at, at Lambo. I put the air down into. Uh, I set it in about 58, <laughs> and people are just that very thing. people are just freezing up there. Um, because I want to feel like I'm in Green Bay, you right. know. <laughs> You've been there, you yeah. you know. We, we I know put off rocks and we. You know, <laughs> so what is it like for you? How did I? I don't know that you guys necessarily remember how you met. You've known each other for a very long time, but how did it feel for you the first time that you saw that there was somebody in Texas mm. with a Green Bay collection like this one? It was cool. I mean, I finally met another guy as crazy as I was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we met, you know, the, the real advanced Packer collector uh, group is, yeah. is, you know, it's, it's fairly small mm -hmm. and, and we all kind of know each other and, or at least have heard of each yeah. other. And maybe when maybe I moved to Dallas, I knew that Glenn lived mm -hmm. in Grapevine, just maybe dealing on eBay or, yeah. or uh, seeing him on Facebook or whatever. And, you know, we made the connection then. But uh, what was it like when I went to his house for the first time? It was, it was real cool. Um, one thing about Glenn, I, I think, and I kind of have the similar trait, is he's a real uh, visual guy. Like if you go into, and, and I am too, like if you go in and look at our displays, and probably anyone that displays their collection, it's like a huge work of art or a big group of yeah. artwork. Uh, he has it laid out so nicely. Um, that has, video that you have on yeah, it's, is fantastic. It's, you know, I think anybody, even if you're not a sports fan or not a Packer fan, when you walk into a really nicely done display, you really appreciate it because mm -hmm. you know that he took a lot of hours of work and days and years of work to put something like that together. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. goes into putting a collection that's, you know, notable in the, in the country. And, uh, you know, that's what hit me when I saw his collection is, wow, this guy, you know, he's passionate just like I am, and mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah, uh, well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, that's one thing that I didn't want to do uh, is amass a collection that was just in boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the visual aspect of it. I like the display aspect, right. and it uh, makes it a lot more interesting to everybody. Uh, you know, uh, Chris mentioned something. I'm not. I can't remember what it was, but it brought up a, a fact that you know, uh, when people come to my to my rooms there to to look at it you know i get a, probably 50 percent of the people i get there aren't packer fans <laughs> when they come in and um, but when they leave well when they leave they say i wasn't a packer fan but now that's my second favorite team <laughs> yeah. and that's my goal every time uh after i make them get on their knees and kiss the Super Bowl turf that I have. In you the have room. the P from the Super Bowl. I have Super the P, Bowl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, many people, how many people have that? <laughs> we should say the literal P, not the, uh, yes. not the figurative P. Yes. So well, then I remind them, when they kiss it, then I remind them how many pa uh, players spit on the turf That's right. out there. <laughs> kind of ruins their day. <laughs> so I do want to ask you about when one amasses such an extraordinary collection, and it's been interesting, the two and a half years I've been here at Heritage, to talk to people who begin to part with pieces of mm -hmm. their collection about how a relief it is, how much of a, how painful it is, and yet how they also feel like as collectors, yeah. they're also caretakers for the next mm -hmm. generation of collectors. Yeah. And I assume that all of that is kind of at play here. It's perfectly worded. I mean, all of those emotions come into play with uh, letting go of it, you know. Over the years, you know, there's people 
you know, always asking me, hey, are you going to ever let go of anything? I'd love to have something from your collection and mine. And, you know, I've kind of brushed them off over the years. And, you know, the, uh, there's so many passionate collectors uh, of Packer memorabilia that, you know, it, it, it feels okay to let go of some of it. it. I had to get to that point where I just didn't want somebody to buy it and flip it. Right. I, I want it to go to a good home and I, I, I feel like people, I mean, after the last items I had in Heritage, I probably had three, five or so collectors email me and say, hey, I finally got one of your pieces <laughs> and I want you to know it's in a good home. And I mean, that really makes me feel great. Yeah. I, I like the idea that you're able to pass these things on and somebody else is going to really care about that mm -hmm. item as much as I did. So, yeah. Let's talk about, Chris, some of the things that are in this particular auction. Sure. Talk about some, because I, I assume that every single one of them you went to Glenn, I, I, I would like to have that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I um, mean, and, and uh, <laughs> rightfully so. I mean, we can go right around the room. Right here is a blue and gold. A lot I of people that. don't know they were blue and gold, but yeah. They were uh, 1940s, 1950s. They wore it all the way through the 60s. Yeah. Uh, Sideline cape. Uh, the Packers didn't have a ton of money back then. Right. And they just kept carrying this mm -hmm. style uh, sideline cape over and over and over. And they actually wore these in, I believe, the 61, 62 championship game, yeah. maybe 65. Maybe 65. Even. And yeah. in the ice bowl. They, mm -hmm. You can actually see some of the guys yeah. still wearing those. Some kind of them are wearing green. Mix match of yep. things, yeah. Which oh, is yeah. really crazy. But this yeah. this might have been on the field at Lambeau at, mm -hmm. the, uh, at the ice bowl. It's still cold. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> some icicles on it. Um, it does seem to be one of the least um, pragmatic things to wear on a... Uh, billion degrees below day. Right? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I still think that these, mm -hmm. for, for the money, for the value of yeah. these, this is like one of the best pieces that exists of Packer memorability because look how beautiful that thing mm -hmm. is. It is. It's so cool and the color never fades on these mm -hmm. or rarely fades. This thing yeah. looks like it did, you know, Pretty much back now. in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, right to Glenn's right, we have a Carol Dale uh, game worn jersey. Uh, Carol Dale was a real notable um, wide receiver mm -hmm. in the 60s and early 70s. He made a few Pro Bowls, a yeah. really underrated uh, receiver in my opinion, but uh, still in, in Titletown he was pretty well known. Um, right to, uh, next to the Carol Dale jersey is one of, another one of the most beautiful display pieces. The, the color, the clarity on that, and that's Lombardi getting carried off the field. Such at, an iconic. It's, it's I mean, unreal. 1961 championship game, that was Vince Lombardi's first championship in the NFL. Um, they beat the Giants 37 to nothing, and it was at Lambeau. Very, very impressive piece, and, and literally that may be, in my opinion, the best Lombardi photo in existence because of the size and the clarity and the subject. It's just, it's unbelievable. You know really the only is. way this picture could be better? If it was of Tom Landry. <laughs> <laughs> but then well, it would be a phantom would that be piece. nice? <laughs> um, and then uh, the gold helmet it. right there is super cool. Um, I love these old Pro Bowl helmets yeah. because that what that is, that's an old Packer game used helmet. You can see the G underneath the gold. Right. And yeah. it, it, that was Carol Dale's also. And Carol mm -hmm. Dale's, right? Carol Dale, yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to do this all from memory. Yeah. Um, but uh, good. there's nothing you have memorized more than what <laughs> I know to which Green Bay player. Yeah, I'm second he knows, myself he knows no his reason. stuff. Um, yeah, he's an Pro expert. Bowl, Pro Bowl uh, helmet from Carol Dale, but what's super cool is uh, back then the yeah. NFL would just paint gold paint over, right over the, helmet. the helmets and yeah. then they'd slap the NFL shield on each side. And th to me, that's one of the most beautiful game-worn helmets that yeah. you can have is any Pro Bowl helmet from the 60s, super cool. I've got um, Donnie Anderson's yep. Pro Bowl helmet. And uh, Donnie lives locally, mm -hmm. so I've had lunch with him a few times, and I asked him about that process, and he said, Glenn, they literally took us from one game, put us on the plane with our helmet, with our pads, and flew us there, That's and they, crazy. they just painted my helmet. <laughs> and I was like, that is fantastic. Yeah, I just think I mean, it's so, so, cool. so unique that you yeah. can see the, the, the yellow paint, paint on it and the yeah. G. It's and the G underneath the NFL crest. Like yeah. thinking in today's terms, that would never happen. Never but, happened. you know, back then, that's, mm -hmm. that's why I love the old stuff. It's mm -hmm. had that certain charm to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so anyway, we have a few more pieces down here. We have a 1927 Packers program from when the Packers played the Chicago Cardinals. Um, pretty cool piece. Any Packer program from the 20s is very special, and this one has a very nice uh, cover on it. Some of the covers from the 20s just had text on them. This has a nice uh, 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 photograph on it. Um, any press book from the 40s, 30s uh, of the Packers looks so cool. That is what this is right here. That's from 1940. It's Was there ever a t-shirt with that design? I wouldn't because doubt it. That or is a similar. spectacular design. Yeah, similar. But it's amazing that all the press books, or the majority of them from the 30s and 40s, they had just amazing color. I don't know who did Incredible that. Incredible art. Because yeah. you didn't see that kind of art on anything else no, from didn't. that era. No, you, um, you know, some of the stuff is cool, but not like that. Mm -hmm. It's just super special. Yeah. It's large. You know, it's an oversized mm -hmm. publication, so that's super cool, too. Um, but I love those. And we have a number of those yeah. from Glenn's uh, collection in the November mm -hmm. uh, catalog auction. Um, right here, this is something that they would, it's, it, it's basically a decoration that they would put over a vehicle's license plate. I don't even know the technical ah. term for it, a vehicle topper, topper. Or, ah, or license topper. plate yeah. topper, and that's uh, made mm -hmm. out of like aluminum, I believe. Yeah. And uh, those are super rare, and I've actually seen some old photos of people in the Green Bay area from back then uh, of their vehicle, and you will see some of those cool. uh, decorative toppers on the license plate. Yeah. So, you kind of can date them to the 40s or 30s, mm -hmm. roughly on something like that. So yeah, just this small selection doesn't even make a dent of, out of what Glenn <laughs> right. can sign Got a lot of to our November auction. But uh, it just shows you that you don't need a thousand pieces to make a great display. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, five, six, seven pieces right here, and it's already one of the cooler Packer displays that you'll ever see, really. You know, before I want to wrap this up by asking both of you this question, which is, what is it like for the two of you to find each other? It's one thing to, to know that Chris it's love works at, at first sight. Well, I mean, right. Chris <laughs> works at an auction house, so it's, oh, really, it's pragmatic. It was amazing. It's yeah. Very, yeah. It's, but to find yeah, that this very guy ironic. No. is probably equal to you in a lot of ways in your fandom and your collecting. Oh, we, no so, doubt. Yeah. So tell me about finding each other. Yeah. Well, I think we just <laughs> fit together, you, you know, and we're, we're, we have so many common interests, yeah. clearly. And um, the thing I like about Chris, you know, he's always... You know, I remember the first time you came over, oh, my dream is to have a collection like this. And I told him, Chris, you're young, you're going to have a collection. And he does. He's got, <laughs> he's, he's got one of the better collections. Mm -hmm. I, I have a really colorful, uh, great display, but Chris has really incredible items. And, Thank you. Um, but like you, you, you know, know, it's just a lot of years. It's going to be a lot of years. And, and, you and know, blood, sweat, and Someday tears he'll be it. sitting here being interviewed when he's getting... Uh, letting go of some of his items, <laughs> so uh, more than more than you know. Likely, but yeah, yeah uh, you know, being from the same state and loving the same team and loving memorabilia and and the history of uh, of the Packers, uh, you know, it it's, was great for me to to meet Chris. So we we've been close for a long time. Yeah, and Glenn makes the best baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> that I, on this earth, I think it's your, probably your mother's recipe. It's my mother-in-law's recipe. Okay, okay. And, well, props uh, to your mother-in-law. She then. Uh, she passed it on to me, and I uh, I make it for every Packer get together. So. Yep. Between Even at your, your home, I I made it. Yes, yes, between you your did. mother leaving her collection, your I wife giving the tours, and your mother-in-law mother giving you a baked bean collection. I, a what can you time. ask? <laughs> you have a lot He's to a very lucky man. Uh, but you know, you asked you know yeah. what it was like for us to meet. Not just us meeting, but like any person from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. pretty much there, you automatically have something in common with, with someone from Wisconsin, because it is so small. And really, other than the Packers, if you're a sports fan, what is there? You know, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, we all like to go out for fish fries yeah. on Fridays. Yeah. We all like a, a good brandy, old fashioned to drink. Oh yeah. And we love the Packers. Yeah, everyone yeah. in Green Bay has a basement with Packer stuff in it. Yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, we we automatically have that in common just mm -hmm. because we're from Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, it's definitely special and and, and kind of crazy how things worked mm -hmm. out. Now Glenn's sitting here and he's selling a good I don't portion think of his he collection. Ever thought I'd let go of anything? But, uh, I mean, he was after me for a long time. I have no doubt. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, yeah, and he's he's been very uh, a gentleman about it because he's never pushed. Uh, well, he's pushed but not shoved. And uh, <laughs> I never thought there was a chance, so I'm like, I'm not even going to ask. Well, him. yeah, and I appreciate that because he, he's never been uh, 
<laughs> a lot of pressure, pressure. But well, you still have some I pieces knew. in your collection still oh, I, that we I, want for I, the next I, I installment of the Glen I've got a lot of pieces actually, but yeah, it, it. I feel comfortable with my collection in heritage auctions right. and in Chris's hands. That's the that's the big thing. I don't think I'd be having this discussion with another company. So well, that's that's what it boils down to. So. And it's the Chris's credit into you. Yeah, it is. So. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Gentlemen, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You bet.